Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India for hands-on FACO and SICS training. This is an opaque intraocular lens. Pupil is small, the lens haptics are not seen, haptics are covered by the iris and I have to expand this lens and place a clear lens. I have planned to remove the lens in total without cutting it. So, I am making a sclerocorneal tunnel of about 6 millimeter, just like a SICS owned sclerocorneal tunnel of 6 millimeter or maybe 5.75 millimeter. I have not measured it, this may be even 5 millimeter. So, making the sclerocorneal tunnel. It will have to be do a very neat tunnel, a very nice corneal valve, then we can avoid suturing this wound even though we may have to do vitrectomy in such cases. But it is recommended that you put on or two sutures to oppose the wound margins nicely. And now my plan is to make some stab incisions. This stab incision is little larger to introduce instruments and maneuver the lens. So I made it little bigger. This is a small stab incision. It hooks the iris and retracts the iris so that I can see the haptics. Another stab wound and on more iris hook at 5 o'clock and retract the iris. Another stab wound at round on o'clock and on more iris hook is placed here. And on more iris hook has been placed at the wound at round 11 o'clock and we get 4 iris retracted and we can see the rexus margin now and the IOL is in the bag. And now I try to mobilize the lens. I should do some, inject some visco underneath this rexus margin. So, I am doing that and now after injecting some visco, I hope the lens will be separated from the capsule and now I introduce a Sinsky hook again. Note that this stab wound at 11 o'clock is little larger. It is being used to retract the iris as well as to inject visco to introduce other instruments. Now I open this sclerocorneal tunnel with a keratom. This is a 2.8 millimeter keratom and I use a Sinsky hook to mobilize the nucleus. Again some visco under the rexis margin, hoping the lens will be separated from the capsule. And now I use the Sinsky hook and pull the haptic gently. This video is in fast mode that's why it is showing rapid movements but this was very gentle pull and the haptic comes out of the back inject some more visco and now i introduce the uterator forceps hold the optic of the intraocular lens and pull it downward so that the haptic which was 
at one o'clock comes out of the bag. It has almost come out, but still uh, one draw of the haptic is not uh, in the anterior chamber. And now the eye will has, yes, it comes out. I use the uterita forceps again to hold it and bring it in the anterior chamber. Inject some visco in front of the lens so that the endothelium is protected. And now I take, now I take a, I place the lens down so that it doesn't rub the cornea, back of the cornea, and while it comes out, inject some more visco in front of the lens, and now is the time to explant it in total. It comes out very easily through the sclerocorneal tunnel. Friends, we should not do a lot of maneuvers in the anterior chamber to cut the lens. Definitely, you will touch the corneal endothelium once or twice when you cut the lens. Better you make a 5.5 millimeter sclerocorneal tunnel and bring it out. And now I inject visco, and now I have a doubt that the posterior capsule is not there because with retro illumination of the Lumera T microscope, I can't see the capsule. So, what to do? I inject visco and ask for triamcinolone acetate known as Kenacort in our place. And before introducing Kenacort, I remove some visco, otherwise the visco will not stain the vitreous properly. Or probably I was not sure that the posterior capsule is intact or not and I use this Simco at this time. Probably we can use Tramsinolone in presence of HPMC. Now inject Tramsinolone acetate and immediately the vitreous strands stand out. You can see the vitreous strands in the anterior chamber. One iris retractor got detached, displaced properly. And now I remove the iris retractor at 11 o'clock. I want to use this for the cutter now. And one more uh, incision we need to introduce the irrigation. So I make an incision at around 4 o'clock or Yes, 3.30 o'clock. And now I use the cutter, cut rate is 3000, flow rate is 30, 25 and vacuum is 175. This is a new cutter and it is cutting the vitreous very nicely, vitreous strands, it is cutting it very nicely. But this vitrectomy has to be very thorough. There should not be any vitreous strand coming along the pupillary border and coming out of main incision or side port incision. If it happens, we have to do vitrectomy again. No iris, no vitreous strand should come out in the prolapse into the anterior chamber. It should not hook the pupillary border and come out through an incision, either side port or the main wound. I'm using enough time for vitrectomy counter cutter. This video took about 35 minutes. It has been edited to about 20 minutes. I request you to 
observe the full video and planning to get the post op pictures today and I'll attach the post op pictures and then post the video and I find that there is a vitreous strand coming out of the main wound. So I ask for the triamcinolone acetate again and inject a bit of it. We should not inject a lot of triamcinolone, then it falls over the macula and if a lot of triamcinolone acetate is there in the vitreous cavity, then it can cause tremendous rise of intraocular pressure. Yes, now I can see the vitreous strands and all the vitreous strands are removed nicely. And now I can see one vitreous strand coming out through the side port through which the vitrectomy cutter is being used. So I go through the main wound and hook this and cut this. Once this is done, then the people become surround and we can place the intraocular lens now. I usually use an air bubble to form the anterior chamber at this time and then inject the intraocular lens because at this time we, if we use visco, lot of it will go into the vitreous cavity and uh, removal of it will be difficult. We have to use the vitrectomy cutter again, but vitrectomy cutter has to be used for a long time if we use visco. With air, it is possible to place the intraocular lens over the iris. And now I place the intraocular lens over the iris. The air bubble is protecting the corneal endothelium. And now I inject some visco over the intraocular lens. Some visco at 6 o'clock so that I can see the haptic. If we inject visco over the intraocular lens, uh, it chance of going lot of visco into the vitreous cavity is less. And now the haptics, haptic goes into the sulcus, the leading haptic goes into the sulcus and now I remove the air bubble and then I hold the trailing haptic with a Macpherson's forceps and place it in the sulcus. It goes to sulcus at on attempt. I pull the lower haptic. I have a doubt that there is a genular dialysis. I pull the haptic more and probably the there is no genular dialysis from 12 o'clock to 9 o'clock place the haptic there and the lens remains central. The beauty of this lens is it does not rotate. It is very thin, haptics are very thin, PMMA lens may rotate, but this acrylic lens with this kind of haptic does not rotate. Sensor multipiece lens is not available nowadays, this is Orolabs preparation Orolabs product. This is Orolabs multipiece intraocular lens, beautiful lens. This uh, lens should be available so that we can manage such cases nicely. This is nice centration of the intraocular lens. And now an air bubble goes. This is the removal of uh, iris hook, which was at 7 o'clock. Then I remove the iris hook, which was at 5 o'clock. See, with air bubble inside, how beautifully we can remove the haptics. We do not have to inject visco at this time to remove the haptic, uh, to remove the iris retractors. And now is the final lavage and 
to see if the uh, lens is nicely centered or not. Yes, the lens is very nicely centered. So, in this case, the message I want to give to an average surgeon like me is do not go into the uh, idea of cutting the lens and do a lot of maneuvers inside the anterior chamber and do a lot of pulling and pushing. Definitely, you are going to touch the endothelium also twice, and endothelium more is more costly, endothelium is more precious than. A sclerocorneal tunnel. Sclerocorneal tunnel is very forgiving. We can make a large tunnel, no problem, it will heal very nicely. But if endothelium is damaged, we may have to do a very difficult surgery, demake or dissect, which depends on donor tissue. Now, this is the final uh, lavage with the vitrectomy cutter because there may be some uh, vitreous strands here and there. I find that the antechamber is very nicely formed and no, no leakage of any uh, liquid, any fluid from anterior chamber. And now we are towards the end of this surgery. Still, a lot of things are to be done. We have to oppose the conjunctiva to the limbus very nicely. This is moxifloxacin or pilocarpin. I want to constrict the people and see that it is really nice. And now, this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber through the wound at 11 o'clock with the Simcoe cannula, and the anterior chamber is nicely formed. check the integrity of the wound. There is no leakage from the main wound, no leakage from the side port. And I am sure that the main wound does not require any suture in this case, but I have to oppose the conjunctiva to the limbus very nicely. So, what I do is I take a 10 O nylon suture and do a releasable suture. If we use bipolar weight field cautery, there is burn and it is not foolproof. It may, and there is a lot of scarring, a lot of bad appearance. But if we do a releasable suture like this, healing is very good. I am trying to get post of pictures, so you will see that how beautiful it is. And we are towards the end of the surgery. Let us see the post op pictures. See the opposition of the conjunctiva to the limbus. How beautiful it is. There is a releasable suture. Cornea is absolutely clear. There is very mild uh, dismets membrane folds here and there. People is little distorted because of application of iris hooks. Antichamber is quiet. Visual acuity is 6 by 12 with optical correction and it will improve further when the dismets membrane folds and goes off. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.